On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed, everyone. Happy Easter. Would you please stand tonight as we join in celebration and lift our voices with a grateful heart to the risen Savior this evening. Let's celebrate together. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul This bag of bones I try with all of my might I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when the good news together, that the one who authored our story decided to rewrite it all, to give us a new name, a new identity, a new family in Christ, beloved nature and life with him. Would you join in singing and celebrating with us as we worship? i 
celebration with all of heaven, recognizing the gift, the great gift that it is to be brought from death into life, from separation into closeness with you. God, would you fill our hearts with your spirit and with great hope and joy as we hear more of the truth of your great love for us. Amen. I want to invite you now to be seated. Amen, amen. Well, hey, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Happy Easter weekend to you. It's so great to be with you today. If this is your first time at Woodridge or if you're a regular with us, man, we're so grateful to celebrate Resurrection Week and the victory that's found in Christ. Um, I've got just one really quick announcement before we dive into the message. It's a really important message. All right, after the service, 
Easter egg hunt. All right, I know probably many of your kids were like asking about that. Just a few quick details around that. If you have elementary age kiddos, what you'll do is you'll head downstairs and they're going to have uh, basically a colored stamp and that denotes what type of Easter egg they can gather. Uh, parents, you'll have a chance to do that with your kids. If you've got preschool age kids, you'll pick them up upstairs and then take them downstairs to the gym. Same sort of thing. You walk through the Easter egg hunt with them. And then afterwards, we just invite everyone to join us for an Easter dinner. It's just a great chance to be a part of the church and just maybe meet a new friend uh, that we might have here tonight together. But happy Easter, everyone. We're so grateful for it. This is really like kind of the Super Bowl of, of the church, if you think about it. There's no halftime show, though, all right? No halftime show for us. But the thing that I, I think about so much about Easter is that if the tomb truly is empty, it changes everything. All right, and the thing that I love about Easter is that the resurrection of Jesus, it really takes things and it sort of flips it on its head. All right, it takes the world all around us and it flips things upside down. It kind of shakes things up a little bit. And when I think about that, there's something else that kind of shakes things up and kind of turns things around. And that little thing is a riddle. Now, I'm always game for a little bit of a riddle. So I have a few riddles for you, okay? The first riddle goes something like this. What is free but will cost everything. All right, what is free but will cost everything? The second is this, what through defeat brought victory? All right, what through defeat brought victory? And then the third riddle is this, what is empty but brings fulfillment? All right, what is empty but ultimately brings fulfillment? Now, I realize that while I ask you a riddle, I realize I might have just lost you for the rest of the talk here, all right? Because some of you all might be thinking like, okay, I'm chewing on this riddle here. Let me put you at ease. I'll give you the answer at the end. So hang with me. All right, tune back in. But the reason why I love a good riddle is because maybe there's a little bit of confusion, right? It's kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm confused by this, and I'm, I'm kind of seeking and, and, and just trying to understand and unpack a little bit. But the thing that I love about a riddle is that it causes clarity, and it causes us to kind of yearn and seek and try to find an answer, right? We might throw answers out here or there, but there's confusion and there's clarity and there's just this overwhelming sense of, I want to find the answer. And when I think about a riddle, a good riddle, you know, I think for many of us, maybe we're walking in here today and you might be thinking to yourself, if I was to reflect on my own faith journey, my own life, maybe you would say, yeah, my life feels a little bit like that as well. You see, because maybe some of you are walking in here tonight and you're like, man, my life just is one big confusing mess, right? It's kind of like whenever you hold sand in your hand on the beach and the sand is just kind of dripping through your fingers. It, that's kind of what your life feels like. It's like, man, I just feel like life is just sort of slipping through my, my fingers and, and I don't really know what's next. I don't really know how to go about the next step. I, I'm just kind of confused in general. And if that's you, man, grateful for your presence. Maybe for some of you, though, you're kind of on that clarity-seeking journey, you're like, yeah, I feel like there are so many questions in my life that I want the answer to all of these big questions. Like, why am I here? All right, what is the purpose? All right, is there really meaning at all to life? All right, and the thing is, is like a good riddle. We might kind of throw answers out there, but we may not feel super confident or assured in that answer that we give. And so we're left kind of grasping and thinking and chewing on it. And so we'll see that tonight. As, as we dig into a, a, an amazing story from John chapter 11, it's really a story of Jesus and one of his friends named Martha, as Martha felt like she was navigating really a riddle in many respects as well. And so to set the, the stage for you a little bit, in this interaction between Jesus and Martha, what we'll ultimately see is that Jesus gives two truths, all right, two truths to the riddle-laden life, and then we'll see a response. So two truths and a response. But a little bit of context before we dive into John chapter 11. Now this happened just a few days prior to Jesus' crucifixion and ultimately his resurrection. And what happened is that Jesus was up north and he was ministering. He was kind of doing what he was doing. And all of a sudden word came to him that his good friend Lazarus was sick. And so Lazarus was the brother of Martha and, and of Mary. You might know the story. But as word got to Jesus, Jesus did the unexpected. What do you think he did? All right, for some of us, it's like maybe he dropped everything and he ran to Lazarus. Maybe Jesus like called down healing upon Lazarus. Like what did Jesus do? He did the unexpected. You ready for it? He waited two days and he continued to minister there. And then finally he said, it's time to go up to Jerusalem. It's time to go up to Bethany to see my friend Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And as Jesus is going down, word comes back that Lazarus had died. And you can just imagine what Martha was sitting in in that moment. 
Okay, maybe she just had these expectations that Jesus would come sooner. Maybe she had these expectations that, that Jesus from even afar would heal her brother. And maybe some of you kind of sit in that tension as well. Maybe you're sitting there and you're like, yeah, I feel like God is supposed to be with me. I feel like God is supposed to be for me, but I feel like God is just kind of dropping the ball. He's not really meeting my expectations. And you're sitting kind of in that season of mystery and of riddle as well. And so we see as Jesus approaches Bethany that Martha rushes out. Mary stays back, but Martha rushes out. And we see this interaction between Jesus and Martha. Verse 21, it says this. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Okay, pause there for a moment. All right, this is not really a rebuke from Martha. She's just coming with bold assurance saying, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would have lived because I have confidence in your presence. I have confidence in what you can do. And I have confidence that even if you can't do it, you have such a relationship that whatever you ask of your heavenly father, he will answer it. And so it's not necessarily a conviction. It's not really a rebuke. It's more of just this, this longing out to, to Jesus. But then it continues along. He, he says, she says, if you would have been here, my brother would have been healed. But then Jesus said to her, verse 23, he said, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again and the resurrection on the last day. But here's really the, the meat and potatoes of it. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And he asks her this, do you believe this? In verse 27, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. So we can just see this amazing story unfold before us. And Jesus answers her with two truths, and then we see a response. But the very first truth that we come to, the very first truth that we see that Jesus elevating is that Jesus is saying, you know what, there is going to be a life then. All right, Jesus is saying there is a futuristic life. Look again at verse 25. Uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And so this is the most clear understanding that we can go to in any part of scripture to really just understand and unpack this idea that there is life after death, all right? And I know that for some of us, it's like, wow, that's like mind-blowing for me a little bit because I think for many of us, it's like, I, I thought that, you know, I just was, after I die, I just go into the ground and, and I just cease to exist. But what Jesus is saying here, he's saying, I am the resurrection and the life. There is abundant life available to you then. In a future state, there is life after death. And Martha gets it. She says, you know what? I, I believe that because I believe that my brother Lazarus, he will rise again on the last day. And this is just a, a hope and a truth that we have to cling to. And it's a, tr a hope and a truth that, that our family, my family, has really allowed to sink deep into our hearts. Because if we were to look over the last 10 months, um, our family, my wife Cassie and I, we've navigated immeasurable amounts of grief. Within the last 10 months, we've lost, uh, Cassie lost both of her remaining grandparents within a few short months of one another. I lost my, my grandmother in November. Um, for many of you who are here at Woodridge, you know that we as a church within the last month and a half uh, experienced the, the horrific death of our friend Paul Elmstrand who was murdered in the line of duty as he was responding to a call. And then even in this last week, we caught word that a two and a half year old at our church passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. And it is so incredibly hard. Man, it is so difficult. But yet even in the hard, there is hope. You see, even in the difficult, even in the despair, there is the word that Jesus says, though he shall die, yet he shall live. Jesus says there is life after death. There's abundant life then. And I just think, man, for, for each and every one of us, this is something that we have to hold on to, something that we have to, to cling to. Uh, because for those of us who are navigating some type of loss, maybe you need to hear the words of Jesus to Martha when, when he said, your brother will rise again. Hear these words, your daughter will rise again. Your grandmother, your grandfather will rise again. Your father, your mother will rise again. Your husband, your wife will rise again. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. He says there is life after death. That's the first truth that we can hold on to, that even in the hard, there is hope. 
But Jesus doesn't stop there because he actually turns the, the, the script a little bit more. And, and he says, not only is there life after death, watch what he does here, there's also life before death. All right, he says that there is abundant life here and now for each and every one of us. All right, he continued along in verse 26. Uh, Jesus said to her, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Hold that there for a second. He asked, do you believe this? And, and I appreciate about this because what he's ultimately saying is everyone who lives by believing in me shall never die. You see, Martha in this moment, as, as Jesus is conferring with her, she says, yeah, I believe that my brother will rise again, right? She had her eyes and her focus so set on the resurrection life then but I think Jesus was trying to draw her attention back to resurrection life now. So it's life then and it's life now. It's an abundant life in the future and it's an abundant life here in the present. Jesus is saying, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And just a chapter before this, Okay, Jesus shared perhaps one of my favorite verses in the New Testament. If you've been at Woodridge, if you've heard me preach, I like probably quote this, this verse every other time that I'm preaching. Okay, but John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that you might have life abundantly. In the Greek, it's the word zoe, life. My daughter's name is Zoe. Do you know why I like it so much? But what Jesus is ultimately getting at here, he's, he's calling our attention to this. He's like, whoever lives by believing in me, they will not face death here and now. And what Jesus is getting at is he's saying, you know, there are two forces. There's a force that's drawing us to death and destruction. And there's a force that's drawing us to life and peace and flourishing, the abundant life even now. And so I just invite you to reflect with me for a moment. What are the forces that kind of draw us in to potential death even now? You know, whenever we look at it, Right, there, there are so many statistics that are flying around right now that are elevating this idea that we are perhaps becoming the most anxious generation in history. Okay? Th that we are an anxious driven people. Okay? And the reason for that, I mean, there are multiple reasons for it. But what they ultimately say is this that the more stuff we accumulate, the more anxious we become. Okay, do you see there's like this correlation between it? It's like the more stuff we get, the more stuff we're afraid of losing or the more stuff we're afraid of, of breaking or getting destroyed, so we become even more anxious, okay? But not only that, what we, what we see is that with the advent of social media, now all of a sudden we're walking through life and we're just comparing ourselves to other people, right? We know every blot and blemish of our lives. What I would ultimately say is that we look at people on their best day and compare it to our worst day. We look at people in their highlight reel and we compare it to our blooper reel, Okay, that's what we're doing, and it's making us more and more anxious. But not only that, we're just kind of floating through life. And, and my greatest fear, if I'm completely honest with you, is that I'm going to get to the end of my life, and I'm going to live a wasted life. In fact, like, I have this image of, like, I hope and pray that it doesn't say on my tombstone, here lies Zach, a wasted life. Okay, that's, that would be, like, the worst thing. It would be so detrimental to me. But do you see how Jesus, this riddle, flips itself on its head? You see, the world says, accumulate more stuff and then you'll be happy. But the more we accumulate, the more empty we become. The more stuff we have, the more empty we are. But what Jesus actually says is because of the empty tomb, you will find fulfillment. Right? Because the tomb is empty, because he's bringing purpose to each and every one of us, we want to have purpose and fulfillment in life. And so for some of us here, we need to just hear this. That, that Jesus says that, Whoever lives by believing in him shall not face death. That Jesus doesn't just save then, but Jesus is still saving now, right here, today. You see, he's still giving purpose to the purposeless. Jesus is still giving hope to the hopeless. He's still welcoming the prodigal son or daughter home. He's still cleansing the adulterer. He's still making all things new. He's making those people who harbor bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness in their heart, he's allowing them to walk in freedom so that they might forgive others. He's restoring marriages and he's restoring families. Jesus is the alpha and the omega, the one who says all things are new. The one that we just sang, the song we just sang, I have a a new name written down in heaven. That's the work of Christ. And so we have purpose. We have hope. We have goodness in all things. And so when I think about this, Jesus promises us not just a life then, but a life now. He doesn't promise us just life after death, but he also promises us life before death, here and now. And so as we kind of 
wrap that riddle back up because I know some of you, I can see it in your eyes. You're still chewing on that riddle, right? What about this first riddle? What is free but will cost everything? The answer is Jesus' crucifixion. You see, because it was something that we, we looked at last night with Good Friday, that Jesus' death is free for you and me, that he washes us clean of all of our sin, shame, and brokenness. It cost him everything, but it's free for you and me. What about the second riddle? The second riddle is this, what through defeat brought victory? Well, on the surface, it looks like Jesus was defeated, but what we actually see is that through his death, he lived. And so what we can ultimately say is it's Jesus' resurrection. What through defeat brought victory? The new life found in Christ. The third thing is this, what is empty but brings fulfillment, right? It's not the stuff we accumulate. It's not our comparison with those on social media. But the thing that is empty that brings fulfillment is the empty tomb, right? When Jesus stepped out of the empty tomb, if the tomb truly is empty, it changes everything. It brings hope. It brings purpose to our lives. And so we see the two truths. Jesus promises us life then, but he also promises us life now. And I I appreciate the last thing that we see in this story is Martha's response. And what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to respond as well in just a little moment. It's one of our traditions here at Easter at Woodridge. It's to give you a chance to respond and say, you know what, I I want to respond to Jesus, to the fact that he gives new life then and he gives new life now. But Martha, what she does is she, she says, as she's prompted by Jesus, do you believe this? And she simply says, yes, I believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, You are the son of God. You are the one who is coming into the world. It is one of the most confident and complete declarations of who Christ was. She says, though my house shakes because my brother just died, my rock moves not. And you, Jesus, are my rock. And so for some of us here tonight, like I said, I want to give you a chance to respond. And just a little bit, I'm going to pray for us. And I'm going to invite you, if you want to say, this is true of me, I want to commit, I want to respond to Jesus, I'm going to have every head bow and every eye closed, I'm going to invite you to stand with me, and I want to pray for you specifically. But maybe for some of us, we're we're saying, you know, I've never understood or never had the chance to respond to Jesus as Savior, right? And maybe you're walking through, and it's like, man, I'm just afraid of death, I'm afraid of what's around the corner, but the truth of the matter is this, that in Christ, death is not a period. Death is merely a comma. When Jesus stepped out of the grave, he put an exclamation mark on his victory. Uh, the, the gospel or the, the writer Paul says, for anyone who is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so if you're like, I want to know what it's like to say yes to Jesus as Savior, to life then, this future resurrection life, I want to give you a chance to do that in just a little bit. And then for others of us, maybe you are responding to that second truth. Maybe you're kind of walking through and you're like, man, yes, I feel the anxiousness. Yes, I feel the pointlessness. Yes, I feel like I'm hopeless in my life. And I want to follow Jesus as the leader of my life. I I want that abundant, flourishing life. I'm done with the the way of of old things, and I want something new. My, My uncle said it really well. He said, you know, before Christ, I felt like I was walking through life, seeing everything in black and white. But then when I came to Christ... It's like I saw the world in HD. There was new eyes, there was new vision, and there was a new way of seeing things. And so if that's you, in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand, and I would love to pray over you as well, to say, I want abundant life in Christ right here, right now as well. But friends, for all of us, man, may we know that truth, the the riddles of life that we face and that we navigate, that Jesus said the words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives by believing in me shall not die. And whoever believes in me, though he shall die, yet he shall live. Proclaiming his victory in all things. Amen. Let's pray together, friends. I invite you now, let's close our head, or bow our heads, close our eyes. And I just want to give you that invitation now with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're sitting there and you feel like um, God is just stirring your heart to say, man, I want to say yes to Jesus as Savior of my life. I've never had the chance to respond to him as Savior. I want abundant life then. I invite you to stand even now. And and others of you, as as some of you are standing now, I see it. Some of you are like, I want what it looks like to have abundant life, not just then, but I want abundant life right here, right now. I'm I'm tired of the, the ways that I'm living. 
I want to see the words come true in my life. When Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life abundantly. Amen. I see you. I'd love to pray for you now. And so, friends, if that's you, I just invite you to simply respond in your hearts. Jesus, we thank you when we praise you. For the joy set before you, you went to the cross and you endured it. And what seemed like a defeat, what seemed like your death was the end, was ultimately a pathway for victory. And so we praise you and we thank you so much that there is new life, there is resurrection life, there is life after death. And so now, Lord, for some of us here tonight as well, we thank you that you don't just guarantee us life then, but you also guarantee for us life now right here, right now. That we're not bound in bondage, we're not bound by what we've done, what we've said, but now we are new creations. The old is gone and the new has come. That you've given us a calling and you've given us a purpose. And so Lord, we just ask that you will guide and direct our steps in all things. And for the rest of us, we invite you now, let's all stand together. Let's all stand together now, friends. Lord, we thank you that your word does not return void, but you are with us in all things, that you put the exclamation, you stuck the landing, victory over death. We're so grateful that we have new life in you. And now we pray, Lord, that you will do much with our worship. Be honored, be praised in this time. We pray it all in the beautiful, matchless name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, one more quick thing. What you'll notice is on the screen behind me that there is a little text in number. Uh, We just invite you to text Easter24 to the number there. The reason for that is because we want to provide you with resources. We want to provide you with opportunities to learn and grow in faith. If you said yes to Jesus, we don't want you to feel alone in this journey. We want to help you. We want to come alongside you. We want to guide you uh, through emails and other resources there. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to get you a Bible. We're here to help and support. But now, friends, I invite you now. Let's respond to his goodness, to his grace, to his love, to his victory. Let's unite our voices together and sing. I was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost. I was running out of time And sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You had me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time, I had hope. And thank you, Jesus.
those giants we call death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way but he came and he died and he rose those giants are dead now this is our god this is who he is he loves us this is our this is what he does, he saves us, he bore the cross, made the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away, it's so weak that And that is the king we worship, the king who is victorious, that when that stone rolled away, he stepped out with the exclamation mark, victory over death, for he is risen. And for centuries, when Christians would go by the highways and byways, when they would see another believer, they would say, he is risen, and they would respond, he is risen indeed. And so friends, three times, he is risen. 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 
friends, may you go with that hope and that truth of Jesus's victory over your life. Have a great weekend, friends.